Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video, we learn about the different types of telescopes and their functioning and working. The first type of telescope we study is the simplest and the most common type of telescope and it is called the astronomical telescope. And this is a ray diagram for the telescope. The definition for the magnification for a telescope is a little bit different from the definition for a microscope. M for a telescope is defined as angles are printed by divided by by object without telescope. Now the minor difference between this definition and the definition for magnification in a microscope is that the denominator for a microscope is the visual angle when the object is kept specifically at 25 centimeters at the least distance of distinct vision or the near point. But you cannot take an object for a telescope and just rearrange it like you can do for a microscope. So for a telescope, the denominator is the angle subtended by the object wherever it is. You're not allowed to move the object if you're looking at it through a telescope. So that's the small definition. Right. Now let's look at the figure again. Here you can see that for a telescope, you most likely will have object that will be very, very far away. So the rays coming will be parallel. Right. Now rays which are parallel and rays which are parallel themselves and also parallel to the principal axis converge at the focus. However, rays which are parallel to themselves but not parallel to the principal axis, they don't converge at the focus but they do form an image at the focus. Right. And you can see that clearly from the lens formula. If u is infinity, v has to be f. Right. So if you take rays coming at an angle like this, which is most likely the case for a telescope, then they'll form an image due to this objective at this point. FO is the focal length of the objective, FE is the focal length of the eyepiece. Right. Now, first of all, the one major difference which is not exactly clear from this figure, but the one major difference between telescope and microscope, for a telescope, eyepiece is smaller than the objective. For a microscope, the eyepiece has an aperture greater than the objective. In this case, you can't really see it clearly. This should be greater than the eyepiece because generally the aperture of the objective is greater than the aperture of the eyepiece. And we know the reason for that. We studied resolving power earlier and the bigger the aperture of the lens, the smaller the radius of the diffraction disk. We did this in wave optics. So that's why it's important to have the objective of a big aperture if you want a focused image. Now let's say this angle is alpha the angle subtended by the object uh, without a telescope that is also the angle subjected on the objective and let's call this angle beta right so what is alpha here alpha can be written as p dash q dash by fo right because if this is alpha this is also alpha and this is this height p dash q dash this is p dash this is q dash divided by this distance Right, so p dash q dash by f. I should technically put a modulus here because angles be taken to be positive, but these could be positive or negative. But we'll not bother with that right now. What is beta? Beta can be taken to be p dash q dash by this distance. This distance is what d p dash. Right, but what is d p dash? D p dash is also the object distance for the eyepiece. Right. And we know that the magnification then will be beta by alpha. So the magnification here will be beta by alpha because you see beta is the angle subtended by this image. This image subtends an angle beta because this triangle is similar to this triangle. Right. And this is alpha. So the angle subtended without the eye would have been alpha. So the magnification would be beta by alpha. And you can see that is equal to F naught by D P dash. Right. Now, what will that be for normal adjustment? In normal adjustment, the final image is also formed at infinity. That means this distance, this point should be the focus of this. Right. That means the first image should be formed at the focus of the eyepiece so that the final image is formed at infinity. In that case, F0 and Fe will coincide. Right. Because the image first will be created at the focus of the objective and that should also be the focus of the eyepiece because it will create another image back at infinity. So in that case, this distance will be the same as Fe. So we can write is equal to F0 by Fe. But the actual answer is a little bit different. The actual answer is, sorry, this should be Fe. The actual answer is minus F0 by Fe because mod M is equal to this is equal to this, right? 
which means that this is equal to m as you can see two things one the image is inverted if p is up and q is downward if the object is something like this at infinity then the image is inverted secondly alpha and beta have opposite senses right so beta and alpha one of them has to be positive one of them has to be negative so this is the case for normal adjustment now i'll just write for a and b separately for a normal adjustment we get m is equal to minus f not by fe another important thing for normal adjustment is the length what is the length of the tube now we know that the length just like for a microscope can be continuously changed however if f not and fe coincide that means this object this image of this object due to the objective is at the focus of the eyepiece in that case these two will coincide and you can see the length will be this focus plus this focus so the length of the tube will be f not plus fe so these are the two things for normal adjustment now let's look at what happens when the final image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision in that case what we will have is this distance d p double dash d p double dash has to be equal to d right and what is d p dash then i'm not going to do the whole formula but you can just use the lens formula to figure out d p dash will be f e times d by f e plus d you just use 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f and this is the equation you'll come up with d p dash is f e d by f e plus d so from that what do we get m is equal to minus f not this should be f e i'm so sorry by instead of f e it will be f e d by f e plus d right so this is the magnification in the case when the final image is formed at d and what will the length of the tube be in that case we already know what d p dash is f e d by f e plus d and this is the focal length of the objective so in that case the length will be f not plus f e d by f e plus d right so again this is the first case for normal adjustment this is the case when image is at d that means this distance is d the near point right this d is different from this d this is just a label this is 25 cm now you can see in all these cases that when the object is at the image is at the least distance of distinction the magnification is greater but on the flip side the eyes have to be more strained right now let's just look quickly at the second type of telescope which is the terrestrial telescope and that is very similar to the astronomical telescope except it just has one major change instead of the image being formed inverted the image is formed erect now for a normal telescope it doesn't really matter for example if you're looking at the moon it doesn't matter whether you're looking at the moon the way you see it with your eye or whether you're looking at it upside down but if you're using a telescope the way someone would use a binoculars to look at the landscape then you don't want the image to be inverted right you want the image to be erect so all that happens is this image before being having its image created by this eyepiece has to be inverted and we know one very simple way of inverting an image if this is a lens you keep an object at the center of curvature of the lens or at twice the focus then the image is formed exactly on the other side exactly of the same size and exactly inverted and the distance is the same as well right this is what we know so all we need to do is between these two we need to add a third lens which will take an image like this and create an image inverted of the same size and that is the terrestrial telescope so the object comes f not now instead of fe being here this is a lens which is called the inverting lens and it is created such that f not is at a distance of 2f from this so this is 2f a real and inverted image will be formed this and then this is used the way the ordinary lens would be used right so in this case there are only two major differences the magnification still stays the same but the length becomes f not plus fe plus 4 fi and this also becomes plus 4 fi the magnification is still the same except the magnification is now multiplied by minus 1 because it's an erect image right so what we did previously was an astronomical telescope now it's a terrestrial telescope which is pretty much the same thing except we have a third lens to make 
to invert this like this. If it didn't have this lens, then this would create an image by this and it would work, but the image would be inverted. Right. Now let's look at the final type of telescope that is called the Galilean telescope. Now it has something which is different from all the other telescopes we've seen now. It actually has a concave lens instead of a convex lens. In all microscopes and telescopes up till now, we've seen convex lenses. But a Galilean telescope has a concave lens and it also forms erect image of the object. Now this is one of those situations where you can easily see the beauty of mathematics as it relates to physics. I'm not going to do this case right now. I'm just going to write down the final answers and you'll be able to derive them yourself. And the reason for that is because the only difference between a Galilean and an astronomical telescope is the sign of the focal length of the eyepiece. In the astronomical telescope, it was positive. Here it's negative. So this goes, this goes. We are not doing these right now. This is still minus. This is still minus. And this is still, these four are still the values for a Galilean telescope, except for a Galilean telescope, Fe is less than zero. But for a terrestrial or astronomical telescope, Fe is greater than zero. So if you put Fe as a positive value and F0 as a positive value, you get magnification negative, which is true because for an astronomical telescope, the image is inverted. However, you put Fe positive and Fe negative, the magnification itself comes out to be positive because of this minus sign. And that tells us that in a Galilean telescope, the image is erect. So these formulas still hold for a Galilean telescope, except Fe now will be negative instead of positive. Now there's one small concept left and that is the concept of a resolving power of microscopes and telescopes. Now the resolving power is defined as the reciprocal of the minimum distance of minimum distance between two objects that can be resolved. We've already seen what resolution of images means with Rayleigh criterion. Essentially, it means that if this is one image with a disk and this is another image with a disk, if the periphery of the first image forms on the center of the second image, in that case, you would just be able to see a slight dip in the intensity and that would be called just resolve. So that is our criterion. I'm just going to give you the formulas because they are in your course. However, the derivation is not in your course. For a microscope, one by a delta D, or the resolving power because delta t is the minimum distance resolving power is the reciprocal of this is 2 mu sine theta by lambda now mu is the refractive index of the medium between the objective and the eyepiece that would be air in our case uh, theta is the angle subtended by the radius of the objective on the object and lambda is of course the wavelength of the light this is for microscope and for a telescope, the, it is defined as the reciprocal of the minimum angular separation. Because if you're looking at planets, any two planets will be separated by hundreds of millions of kilometers. Right. But the angular separation might be very, very small. For a telescope, it is 1 by delta theta. And that is equal to A by 1.22 lambda, where A is the diameter of the objective. Right, the diameter of the aperture of the objective. This completes telescopes. In the next video, we'll complete our study of geometrical optics by looking a little bit closer at the eye and various defects of vision, such as myopia and hypermetropia. Thank you.